Hello everybody, welcome to Tiger Tales, a place where you'll find fan fiction and stories written and read to you by your host me, Ty Tiger. Today we're diving back in to the Ty T Tiger's patent pending Tiger Tales Marvel and DC fan fiction universe, the TMDFE for short. Today we dive back in with a new extraordinary Spider-Man. There's some stuff happening, people. I'm looking forward to reading to you this chapter. That's all I'm going to say. Let's dive in with the new Extraordinary Spider-Man, Chapter 2, 4, is a crowd. You have reached the voicemail of Felicity Hart. I cannot take your message at the moment, so please leave me a message after the tone, and I will call you back as soon as I can. Thank you. Hey, I'm sorry I missed you again, Mum. Uh, I was stuck on some homework and was in the library. I <laughs> got no signal in there. So, you know, you know that's a gigantic pain in the ass. Let me know if there's anything I can do for dinner tomorrow. Uh, up to you, I don't mind. Okay, well, you know, let me know. Uh, love you, Logan said to his mother's answering machine. Logan climbed out of bed and got dressed. Then he ran downstairs. He glanced around the empty household, then got himself ready. He threw his bag over his back, then left the house making sure he locked the door behind him. He then ran up the road and headed to the university. He found his class and sat down, waiting for the professor to turn up. Suddenly, a girl sat next to him. Hey, you don't mind, do you? The girl asked gently. Oh, no, please, go ahead, you're good, Logan replied. The girl was a medium build with light brown short uh, skin and short shaggy red hair. She wore hippie-like baggy trousers with an orange and green a purple uh, and a black cardigan. I'm Amara Edwards, by the way. The girl said holding her hand out. Logan Hart, Logan replied, and shook her hand. Hart, are you related to Felicity Hart, the news reporter? Amara asked, the cheeky grin on her face. Logan sighed. Yeah, she's my mother, Logan told her. She is so cool. Amara said. Yeah, she is, fair enough, Logan agreed. Suddenly, the professor walked in and started the lesson. An hour later, the class had ended, and all the students filled the halls. Logan walked out, and suddenly someone tapped him on the shoulder. He turned around to see Amara. Hey, I know this is a little crazy, but me and my friends always get a hot chocolate and study in the library on a Tuesday if you want to join. Amara offered. Logan thought about it for a second. Yeah, sure, Logan said with a small smile. Amara and Logan walked up to the coffee stand that was placed between their classes and the library. I'd like four hot chocolates, please. Amara said to the man behind the store. Logan pulled out his wallet and opened it, but Amara stopped him. Hey, don't worry, I got this one. We all take turns paying, so just pay when it's your go. Amara told him. Logan nodded, then put his wallet away. Both of them was given two hot chocolates each, then Amara and Logan headed to the library. They walked in, and Amara led them to the back where two other boys sat. Hey guys, this is Logan, and he's in my English lit class. Amara said to the guys. Hey, Logan said. Yo, what's up? One said. Nice to meet you, brother. The other one replied. Logan and Amara sat opposite the boys. Logan, this is JJ and Hunter. Amara told him. Logan nodded in understanding, then he realised who JJ was. Oh shit, you're JD Desarge, the boxer, right? Logan gasped. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm him, JJ chuckled. What are you doing here? Logan asked. The university gave me a sports program grant. As long as I keep my grades up, I can use their sports equipment, they represent me free of charge for the year, JJ explained. That's so cool, dude, I saw your fight against Dante. You smoked him, man, Logan chirped. Hey, thanks. Hey, Amara, I like this one, JJ said with a small chuckle. <laughs> Only because he strokes your ego. Amara grinned. What are you doing here, Hunter? Logan asked. I work in the science division. I work with advanced tech, Hunter told him. That's so cool. Um, I think I saw your professor's page on teleportation technology. He thinks he can duplicate, duplicate the Justice League's tower boom tube, right? Logan told him. That's the one. We actually helped with that. My name's on the paper, Hunter replied. Man, that's so epic. Congrats, Logan chirped. Hey, if you want, I'm showing JJ and Amara around the lab in a couple of days. If you want to tag along, that'd be cool, Hunter offered. I'm looking forward to it. Amara nodded. The four young adults sat and chatted the day away till each one had to go to their next class or leave the premise. Before they left, they all took Logan's phone number, then they all went their separate ways. Logan walked through the car park to get to his next class. It was the quicker way to his next class. He looked across the car park and saw some of the city. 
Then suddenly, one of the buildings in the far distance exploded. Logan gasped. Then he hid in a bush. Quickly, he pulled out his suit from his bag and threw it on. He strapped his customized bulletproof vest on. Then he collected his web shooters to his wrist. He then shot a web out of his bag, sticking it to the base of the bush. He then pulled his mask over his face. He pulled his hood over his head. Then Spider-Man jumped out of the bush, swinging away from the university. He swung through the city. He landed on a roof and ran across it. He then jumped off the building and shot a web and swung through the city once more. He swung above the streets as he reached the building and landed in front of it. He looked at the massive hole in the wall. Then the building was a small bank. There was no fire inside. Instead, massive shards of ice had been frozen from the explosion. The alarm was ringing. Spider-Man climbed over a large shard of ice and got into the building. Then he saw a man stood there shoveling massive stacks of money into a bag. The guy was wearing a big blue winter's coat with a hood which had a white fluffy rim around the hood and a big pair of snow goggles. You know, you can't just take that, right? Spider-Man called out. The man jumped and looked at Spider-Man. He then pulled out a rather large blaster. The tip of the blaster was glowing bright blue. Get out of here, freak. Save yourself the trouble. Trust me, the man said. Oh, it's fine. I need the workout, Spider-Man mocked. The man aimed his blaster and pulled the trigger. A small beam fired from the blaster. Spider-Man jumped to one side and landed on the wall. He looked at the wall where the beam hit and a chunk of ice had formed where the blaster hit. You have an ice blaster? Spider-Man asked. It's called a cold gun, the man stated. Wait, you're Captain Cold, Spider-Man called out. The one and only, Captain Cold grinned. Spider-Man jumped off the wall and shot several web shots at Captain Cold. Then he landed on the opposite wall. Captain Cold aimed his gun at the floor and shot an ice beam. He then ran the beam up, making a block of ice in front of him. The web shots hit the block of ice as if it was a shield. The last web shot broke the ice block into pieces. Spider-Man shot two strings of web at Captain Cold, hitting him in the chest. Spider-Man then threw himself at Captain Cold. As he pulled him off the ground, he punched Captain Cold in the face, knocking him onto his back. He shot several web shots at Captain Cold, but he managed to roll to one side, the web hitting the floor behind him. Captain Cold then dived to one side, blasting Spider-Man, hitting him in the chest, the beam knocking Spider-Man back, and his eye crashed into the wall. Ice formed around Spider-Man's torso, gluing him to the wall itself. Captain Cold grabbed the bag full of money and ran up to Spider-Man. He got close enough to Spider-Man's face. Thanks for playing, Spidey. Captain Cold grinned. Then he climbed out of the bank, leaving Spider-Man frozen to the wall. Spider-Man grunted as he tensed his muscles, and with all his strength, he pulled his arms together, which broke the ice around him. Spider-Man dropped to his knees, as the shards of ice dropped to the floor. He knelt there, breathing hard, when sirens filled the air. Spider-Man jumped up and jumped out of the bank quickly, over the ice, and shot a web and pulled himself high and started swinging, leaving the crime scene. Several news reporters aimed their camera cameras at Spider-Man as he fled the scene. Almost a day went by, almost 24 hours, and Spider-Man swung out onto a roof of the building. He had not returned home, he had not gone to university the next day, he had still not taken off the mask. Luckily to him, he had no classes. He flicked his wrists and the empty web cartridges popped out and landed on the floor. He then pulled out two new cartridges from his belt and loaded them into his web shooters. He sat down and took a breath. I gotta keep moving. I gotta find Captain Cold, Spider-Man told out himself out loud. He pulled out his phone and realised his mother had left a voice message. Damn it, Spider-Man muttered. He then pressed the play button. Hi, Logan, son. I haven't heard from you in a few days. I'm actually beginning to get a bit worried. You know, we speak... Well, we speak every day, really, don't we? And, uh, I don't know, something in me is just saying that maybe things are a little off. We were supposed to have dinner yesterday, remember? I even cooked your favourite. And it's still in the fridge. Covered in cling film. So, listen. I just need to know that you're okay. You know? I'm a mum. I worry. So, just, just send me a message. Let me know you're okay. Okay? I hope you are, because I'm going to send a search party out if I don't hear from you soon. I love you, son. Spider-Man took a deep breath, put his phone away, then walked up to the edge of the building. Couple more hours, and then I'll go home. I'll call, I'll call Mum after I got Captain Cold. Well, that new cold gun is extremely dangerous. I can't leave that running around the streets, he said to himself. 
Then suddenly his head started ringing like a warning alarm. He turned around to see a big black slimy figure with big white eye prints on his face and a huge mouth with sharp teeth and a long tongue diving at him. Venom? Spider-Man yelled in disbelief. Venom crashed into Spider-Man knocking them both off the building. Hello, Spider-Man. Venom growled. How are you here? Spider-Man yelled as he punched Venom in the face, still falling. We are here to kill the spider. Venom snarled as he kicked Spider-Man away. He shot the symbiote tendril from his arm, grabbing Spider-Man's chest and pulled Spider-Man closer to him. Then he threw his fist. Spider-Man shot a web at Venom's face, then grabbed a hold of Venom's head and pulled himself over Venom, dodging the attack. He then shot a web, but before the web could stick to any surface, Venom grabbed hold of Spider-Man's ankle and pulled Spider-Man down, spun him around and then threw him at a car, which was placed several feet below. Spider-Man crashed into the car, the vehicle now crushed under the impact. Venom be a way to kill the new spider. Venom snarled as he landed on the road next to Spider-Man. Spider-Man slowly climbed to his feet, his head still ringing. Venom grabbed Spider-Man by his throat and lifted him off the ground. Okay, okay, you can let go now, Spider-Man choked. We shall squeeze the life out of you. Venom grinned, his tongue licked Spider-Man's face. Spider-Man became silently grateful for him wearing a mask. Hey, he says you can let go. A woman called out. Both Venom and Spider-Man looked at the woman. She was wearing an orange and black bodysuit and wore a unique necklace with claw-like charms around it. In the centre was a fox-shaped talisman. Her hair was short and black. Who are you? Venom asked. The name's Vixen. I said, put the spider down or else. Vixen replied. Venom dropped and Spider-Man on the floor. As he hit the floor, he coughed silently. Then he climbed up on his feet. Spy Spider-Man watched as Venom jumped up Vixen. Vixen placed two fingers on her talisman and the spirit of the gorilla wrapped itself around Vixen and then phased away. Vixen then swung her fist, smacking Venom in the face. The punch sent Venom flying backwards, crashing to the ground. Whoa, that was so cool! Spider-Man gasped as he walked up to v uh, Vixen. Thanks, I thought so too. Vixen grinned. Venom climbed to his feet, then growled at Vixen and Spider-Man. We did not come here to fight Animal Lady. Only the Spider-Man dies by our hand. Venom snarled. Then he jumped and clung onto a wall of a building, then started jumping again, fleeing the battle scene. Spider-Man turned to Vixen. Thank you again. You saved my can back there, Spider-Man said. It's okay. Us heroes have to work together, right? Vixen smiled. Yeah, maybe. I guess, Spider-Man replied. Vixen looked around at the crowd of civilians and news reporters that had swarmed around them. We better go. See you around, Spider-Man. Vixen said. Then she touched her talisman again, and the spirit of the eagle formed around her, then phased away. Then Vixen took flight and flew off. Bye. I guess, Spider-Man muttered. Then he shot a web himself and fled the scene. He swung onto a rooftop and sat on the edge of the building. He pulled his hood down and it pulled his mask off. Captain Cold, Vixen and Venom all in 24 hours of each other? Logan muttered. Where did these guys come from? He asked himself. And there you have it, guys. The new Extraordinary Spider-Man Chapter 2 for is a crowd. I hope you guys have enjoyed this story. I know it is a short one, it's not that long, but I wanted to get a new Spider-Man story out before the end of the year and introduce a bit of the dynamic that you'll be seeing more in the new Extraordinary Spider-Man. I just want to thank uh, my friend Ethan for lending his voice as Venom once again and of course my stepmother Nye, uh, who's also a good friend of mine, um, well, I say good friend, she's my, one of my best friends, uh, but my stepmother for being the voice of Amara slash Vixen. Uh, I hope you guys um, make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, let me down in the comments below if you're enjoying this story. Uh, what do you think is going to happen with the whole Captain Cold, Venom and Vixen running around New York? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching. and Make sure you check out Cosplay Dude 637 uh, with his podcast, Storytime with Cosplay Dude 637 and Parenters Universe 19. Both different uh, Spotify uh, podcasts. Well, I listen to them on Spotify. They're both fantastic. And make sure you check out... Uh, Red Cornish Rangers Nerd Through Comics, which is also on Spotify and everywhere else that you listen to um, the your 
podcasts and stuff. So yeah, make sure you go check everyone out. And I shall see you guys very soon.